from your explanation, it does mean that this looks like a Siamese case. Uh, you can't stay off as an independent candidate, neither as uh, the political party coming in as uh, the supreme uh, voice here. Yes, the political party is only supreme to the extent of nomination and conduct, conducting of primaries and then submitting the name of the winner to the INEC. Once that has happened, that candidate becomes supreme during the race. That's my opinion. Same with the, with the issue of a deputy governor and the governor-elect. Uh, a couple of days before the elections proper, Mr. Faliki was said to have written to his party and to INEC withdrawing himself as running mate to Bello. In this case now that INEC has gone ahead to declare Yahya Bello as winner of that election, how would this play out? Well, uh, it, it is safe to say that so far what we have heard or read in the papers are uh, facts to the effect that James Faleke wrote to INEC as well as his party not withdrawing his candidacy or his uh, participation in the race, but stating that he is the governor-elect. If the content and the character of the letter states that he is putting up a position that he is the governor-elect, then in the eyes of the Lord, he has not established the withdrawal as required by the law. But if we're assuming that the letter he wrote to INEC and PDP clearly states that he has withdrawn his consent uh, uh, to be a deputy governor, uh, uh, you know, a ca candidate at that time, then as in the eyes of the law, he is no longer the deputy governor. And that means... Even the, can the, 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 the legitimacy of Bello now will be challenged because you cannot go into election as a governor, governorship candidate without a deputy. So in that case, if that has happened, it will validate the assertion of PDP. Mm -hmm. But then the Electoral Act talked about 45 days or thereabouts to the election. There's a time frame within which you can withdraw from the election. In this case, just two, between two and five days. And he wrote two letters. One, insisting that he's governor-elect. The question, I'm asking a double-barrel question. Number one, is he not contravening the law, seeing that he, the INEC did not declare him winner, but he is insisting he's the uh, governor-elect? That's on one side. And then the other part of it is, now that he has submitted this letter a couple of days before the election, when the electoral had given a time frame within which that letter should be submitted, which one should the electoral umpire go with? As regards the provisions of the Electoral Act, you know, uh, uh, stating that you have 45 or 41 days within which you have to file, I do not think that that will um, have a force of law because the court also is aware of necessity, you know, the doctrine of necessity. This is supplementary election, it's not the main election. Mm -hmm. And so the, the provisions of the Electoral Act, some of the provisions, if it offends the spirit and the intention of the supplementary election, even if the matter goes to court, the court will, you know, overlook that provision. But as regards himself as a candidate, my point is, except if I didn't get your point well, my point is if someone says that I withdraw my consent from being a member or a running mate to someone, then you cannot force him. But that is only if he states it expressly that he's withdrawing. If he hasn't said that expressly, in the eyes of the law, he's there. Except if I didn't get your last question well. All right, Mr. Daniel, that, um, that brings us to the argument of the PDP. The PDP has described the, um, the declaration of Yahya Bello as governor-elect as a joke or a farce. And they say he, has, he actually polled just about um, over 6,000, 6,800 um, votes. Does their argument hold any water? Yeah. Actually, uh, with the greatest respect to PDP, it is high time for Nigerians as well as APC to recognize that PDP will always, you know, they are learning to be in the opposition now, and it is not easy to be a defeated fellow. Some of their complaints, sometimes some of their assertions, even when you hear their position regarding government, uh, government policies and programs, some of them are neither here nor there. They just want to be, you know, active. They want to be in the political process. And sometimes even the APC are giving them credence by responding to every allegation that they say. If PDP, we know that the, by the, going by the provision of Section 138 of the Constitution, if you are challenging uh, the, the candidature of, of, of someone, you go to court. And the grounds are set out in Section 138, sub 1 from A, B, C, and D. Unless and until what you are challenging are covered or is covered by this provision of the Constitution, everything else you are saying is a mere opinion. 
Okay, given that they, um, they had gone to the Federal High Court and the Federal High Court de declined jurisdiction, what other avenues of um, getting justice, since they believe um, what they say holds water, what other options would be available to the PDP? PDP, if agreed with the outcome of the election in Kogi, has the right in law to file a petition. Parties in election petition tribunal are the candidate, his party, the electoral umpire, and the respondent, someone who was announced as the, as the winner, and his party. So they, these are the bold players in election petition. So PDP has a right. You have 21 days from when the result is declared to file a petition. And then you have 180 days from when you file the petition for that to be determined. So the options available to PDP in the circumstance is to pursue two things. In one prong, may be to appeal against the decision of the Federal High Court declining the jurisdiction to interpret the law that they approach the Federal High Court with. That is one option. The second option is still to go to the election petition tribunal and challenge it as we know they will. Now, these are two things that they can explore, either one at a time or together. But in my opinion, they will have to pursue it together. These are the options in law open to them. Every other one other than this might just be an activity that may not have the force of law. You know, we keep talking about law, but uh, sometimes we'll still to go back to law. It's really amazing when we talk about uh, inherited votes, just the way we talk about inheritance, trying to look at how it all played out. Uh, Yahya Bela, the governor-elect of Kogi today, will be said to have inherited about uh, 240,861 votes pulled by the late Abu Bakr Audo. And don't forget, again, he came as the uh, first runner-up uh, to the late Audo in the primaries of the party. Uh, you know, in mere, you know, verbal, you know, saying that you're no longer interested in that particular election, because we have to go back to the Electoral Act, does or can anyone go to the election without a running mate to start with? Uh, James Faleke, by now it has not been, uh, you know, certified if he truly wrote a letter to his party withdrawing his candidacy for that particular election. Uh, given that we have heard in the news space and uh, over petitions written by Mr. Falike that he was withdrawing, can it be said that Mr. Bello went into that particular election without a running mate? Thank you. If Mr. Falike actually wrote PDP as well as his party stating that he's withdrawing Poshuan to the provision of the Electoral Act, then I'm afraid that the victory of Mr. Bello cannot be sustained in law because you cannot go into an election uh, 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 proper without a candidate. So that is the problem in that regard. But then you also mentioned something in relation to inherited vote. Now, whether it be a doctrine of inherited vote or doctrine of uh, instrumental election, as people are saying, that the, the main election that, that, that took place, a different candidate will run for it, and then in the second one, someone else is doing it, and then we're having the election in an instrumental way, whether it has a force of law or not. All of these are new. Don't forget that had Mr. Aldo died 24 hours before or after the election, all of these problems will not have occurred because dying 24 hours before is covered by our law. Dying after the election is announced is also covered by our law. But the law has not envisioned a situation where a candidate while running, you know, during the election will die before uh, the declaration of the election. And then INEC also didn't help, you know, matters. We actually don't know why and how they arrive at the conclusion that the result was inconclusive. Because if they declared the result as at that time, and, and look at the election that came on Saturday, it is like a mere walkover. I said it, I said, even if they are fielded uh, a lizard, the lizard will still have won because you have like over about 40,000, you know, margin of gap between you and the next party. And then you have 49,000 votes up for grabs. You have a number of people not qualified to vote. And then you have no turnout during the voting. It can be presumed that even when uh, PDP declared, I mean, INEC declared that the result was inconclusive, it was clear that uh, APC won. So now it will take the court to give a decision that will now give us the, the, a, like a, a legal framework or that will bring the law to bear regarding uh, the legitimacy or otherwise of a candidate or a party at the time the election is going on when a candidate dies. So anybody and everybody has his opinion and people are expressing it, but only the decision of the court in the circumstance will give us a direction.